Hi everyone, this is Kellyanne with Church Windows. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's webinar on membership database design. Um, <clears throat> if you've been to a webinar before, normally we have two people in the room, the presenter and another tech helping answer questions. However, um, we have a really high call volume right now, so we want all of our available techs on the phone to help answer your questions as people are calling in. So today it's just me in the room. Um, I don't have a question answer, so um, if you have a question, um, I won't be unmuting people, but on your GoToWebinar toolbar, if you open the question panel by just clicking the plus sign, you can type your questions in the question panel, and then I will just read them out loud and answer them for everyone's benefit. Um, with that in mind, please try to keep your questions on today's topic of database design. Uh, we're going to look at adding fields in the membership module um, and then also how to um, control your list fields. If it's your first time using the GoToWebinar toolbar, um, just click the plus sign by questions to open that up and you can type things there. I'm feeling a little under the weather today, so pardon me if I um, forget something. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Make sure my mute button is not on and everyone can hear me. Um, again, we're going to look at membership, so I'm going to go ahead and click on membership on the opening screen. Oh, I did want to point out one thing. Um, today we're looking at version 1815.2. SR3 did just come out yesterday, which is part of the reason we're experiencing such high call volume. Um, but what you're seeing on screen today and what you would see in SR3 or even older versions of Church Windows, um, we're going to be looking at the member records, the household and individual record, and those have not been rewritten yet. So even if you're in an older version prior to 18, the way you add fields still functions the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the word membership to open up the membership module. And if you're on an older version, then things look a little different. Um, you click on uh, membership and then you just click on the word members or visitors to go to that side of the database. So that's a little different. If you're on one of the newer versions, then this brings up uh, the membership portal. Um, we're just going to look at members. Um, the way you add fields is the same in members and in visitors. However, you can really customize what you see on the records. We can show different fields in members versus what we show in visitors. So we will take a look at that after we add a few in the member database. So I'll go ahead and click on members. And you see we have the household on the left. And then we put people into the household, and as we do, they have an individual record on the right. Some fields come standard with the program, but you can add fields that are specific to what your church needs. To do that, <coughs> excuse me, we go to members or visitors, and then upper left, we're going to click on options, and we're going to choose the second thing here, customize fields. <coughs> excuse me. Wait momentarily, and that should bring up. This computer seems to be going a little slower than my computer. We have a we go up to the front room to teach these classes, so there's no noise from all the other techs talking. This computer is going slow, so I think I need to ask Jim or Van to do some cleanup here. So momentarily, we should get the option screen. I'm a little circle spinning. Here we go. All right, so it brings up my customized fields for member file screen. Had I gone through visitors, in the upper left it would say customize fields for visitor file. Uh, the first tab here is relabel hide fields, and then we're going to come back to that. I do want to show you some things here, but we're going to click upper left on add, delete, rearrange fields for member file. Um, we have email fields, but we want to add a cell phone field because most people have a cell phone nowadays. Uh, so upper right, we're going to click this button that says Add Field. And that brings up a little window where I can enter information for my new field. Name is what will show on the actual individual record to identify that field. So you can type whatever you like. I'm going to call mine cell phone. Now I want to click under Type. If I click the arrow here, you can see the different types of fields you can add. 
let's talk about these momentarily here. Uh, character, I believe that's up to 50, and that can be any combination of letters or numbers. So that's a field where you just want to type information into it. A date field is a specific field that expects uh, two digits for the month, two for the day, and then four for the year. Email, if you select email, then it looks for the at symbol within that um, to know that it's a properly formatted email address. A list field, we'll look at creating one of those. Um, that's a field, when I show you in a minute, you'll see there's a little arrow beside it, and you create different codes and descriptions. However, a list field, you can only choose one of your codes and descriptions that you cre create. You can only put one of those in that actual field. Numeric would be a field that only accepts numbers. Uh, phone is a field that expects the area code and then the seven digit phone number. And then you also have a phone extension field if you want to add an extension. For cell phone, we're going to, that is a phone field, so we'll select phone. And it automatically fills in the length for a phone field because that expects 10 digits. So then let's just say OK. And we'll close the define new field window. If you have many, many fields to add, you can just keep adding all your different fields and then close this window. But let's take a look. If you look at the top of the list, we see cell phone. Now, I didn't mention here, if you look at the first two columns, they're check boxes to indicate if this field is being shown in the member file. And then the second column using visitor file tells us what fields are being used in the visitor file. Now, we can hide or show a field in the member file right now since we're in members. We could hide a field or show a field just by clicking on the field name. Let's go ahead and click on health record. And over to the right, there's a button. Now watch, this button says hide field in member file. But once I click on that, you'll notice it unchecked health record for using it or showing it in the member file and that button now says use field in member file. So what this button says depends on whether or not the field you highlight has been chosen to be shown or hidden. You use this button to check something to show it. Here I'll check it again. Notice now health record we have a check in use in member file and it says hide. Or if I click it again, because I've highlighted health record, it's going to take that check out. And we'll just leave that as not showing in the member file so we can see that when we go back to member file. Now cell phone we see is the second listing. We don't want that at the very top of all of our information for the individual records. So I can determine the order things show on the individual records by highlighting a field. And then over to the right here I have order buttons. And I can use my down arrow. I want to move it just above email address. But I can use those order buttons to change the order of how I see the fields. And right now, everything we're doing is affecting the member file. All right, now I want to show you how to affect the visitor file, but let me show you one more thing here. I'm going to click on Add Field. And we're going to go ahead and make a field called Email Newsletter. Um, some individuals would prefer to have the newsletter emailed to them. Um, so we want to be able to, on each specific individual record, indicate if they want that newsletter emailed to them. So I'm going to call this field Email Newsletter. For type, I'm going to make it a list field. And for list fields, they can be anywhere from one to three characters in length. So I'm going to go ahead and hit I'm going to make it one character and then click OK. Now notice because I had cell phone highlighted when I clicked Add Field, when I made this new field, it automatically put it right above what I had highlighted. So I can close this and if I want that in a different position, I can move it. I'm going to just move it right above email address. All right, so now we have our two new fields, but one is a list field. So I'm going to upper right click OK to exit the customized screen. And notice, let me grab my pen. Notice here, we have our new fields, cell phone and email newsletter. 
Now, email newsletter has a little arrow beside it. Let me erase my drawing and get my regular clicking tool back. And let's click that little arrow just to the right of email newsletter. That brings up, that's odd, let me, I don't know why, that, we must have had this field already and it held something behind there. Let me delete that. When you open that new field, when you click the little arrow, you should get a screen showing any of the codes and descriptions you already have. It should be blank. That was a little odd. Um, then we need to actually create our yes and no fields that we can add to people's records to indicate if they want that newsletter emailed. So I can click Add Items, and I'm just going to, it's up to you what you call your codes and descriptions. I'm going to say Y for code. Because I selected only one, I only wanted it one character long, it's automatically moving over to description once I type that in. So then I'll type my description. I can just hit enter to have it accept that, or I can move my mouse to the add button and click that. And then I'm going to create my no code. Or you could just have a yes code and leave things blank if they don't want the newsletter emailed. And then I'll close this. And now to add this to someone's record, I can just double click. Or you can single click and click add item to record. So here I had yes originally, and now I just changed it to no. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, someone asked, what happens to the hidden field when a visitor file is transferred to the member file? Does it automatically show when the file is transferred? Um, so if you have fields showing in visitors that are different from members and vice versa, if you transfer someone to the other side of the database, if that field is showing for all of your records, if you said to show it on that side of the member, the database, then it would show for that person. If it's a field you have chosen to hide on that side of the database, then it will not appear for that person. Uh, the information is still hidden behind the scenes, but if the field, if you've not said to show that within that side of the records, it will not show for that person even when you transfer them over if it's not a field you're showing. Let me show you real quick how we can make fields show now in visitors. To do that, we need to actually go to visitors. So up here, I'll click on membership visitors. And now in visitors, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on options and customize fields. And then click on add, delete, rearrange fields. I don't need to create an entirely new field for the visitor side. I've seen people do that. You don't need to do that. All I need to do, if I want cell phone to show in the visitor file, notice we see it is not checked to show. I just highlight it. And now I go over here and click on Use Field in Visitor File. Uh, we could do the same for Email Newsletter. E click Use Field in Visitor File. And I can even change the order if I'd like. Let's just leave those at the top so you can see. Because we moved the others, let's just see how it looks now. So I say OK. And notice right at the top, over on the right side in the individual record, first thing we see is that Email Newsletter field and the cell phone field. So um, another thing it reminded me of when uh, Lois asked about transferring and fields that are hidden in one side versus the other, um, if you're considering deleting a field but then you find people have information in that field and you're not sure you want to delete it, let me go back into membership members here, you could just hide that field and that would retain the information. It's all still hidden. Uh, you just aren't showing that field in the records. Let me show you. If I go to Customize Fields, actually here, Cancel here real quick. Notice we see on Bob's record, right in the middle here, he has an email address. If I go up to Options and Customize, and I highlight Email Address, and say Hide Field in, in Member Record, and say OK. Oops, did I click on the wrong one? Or maybe he had it in both. I know he had, there, we have an other email field as well. Um, notice we don't see that plain email field, but I haven't deleted any information. If I go back in and I click on email address and say use field in member file, I'm not going to even change the position, say OK, 
Notice now, email address is there showing, and the information is still there. So hiding it does not remove the information. It just hides that field and any information that was in there. Another thing I want to show you really quickly, I see questions coming in, but let me, let me show you one more thing. Under Customize, Relabel and Hide Fields, that's the first tab that comes up. And these are fields. The first column shows the, the actual field name, uh, but you can relabel these fields and use them for other things. I frequently see people taking geographic area and renaming that shepherd cell or deacon's group. So let me, so I just, in the second column, I would type in what I want that field to appear as on the records now. And then I click OK. And notice, this is in the upper left, just under mailing code, we have deacon's group. If I click the little arrow beside it, we still have all the geographic area codes and descriptions here. But if I want to now create deacon's group's codes and descriptions, I can highlight the first one of these, hold shift on my keyboard and highlight the last one, and that highlights all of these. And then I can click delete items. Now, it will if you at one point maybe used geographic area, but now you aren't using it anymore, um, so you had it filled out on a few people's records, if I delete these codes, it is going to delete that information from the records. But again, we're assuming here you, you don't really use geographic area that much, so you've decided to discontinue that and use it now for a deacon's group or, or some other reason. So now I have a, an empty field called deacon's group, and I can click Add Items. And then create my different codes and descriptions. Usually I see the actual deacon's name. I'm just kind of generically showing you how. Um, deacon 3. So we could keep adding the different deacons we want for our deacons group. And now, if I click the little arrow by deacons group, that brings up the three codes and descriptions I created. And I could add that household or family to the particular deacons group. All right, let me go ahead and look at some of the questions people are asking. That's about all I really wanted to show you here. Um, someone asked, can you just click on the box to add the check mark instead of using the hide show button? And what she's referring to is in customized fields. Can I just come over and click? And I'm clicking right now using member file. Um, can you just click this box? No. You have to actually highlight the line that you want to hide or show and then click the button hide. Oh, I picked one that you can't hide. There are a few fields you cannot hide. Um, I would click on hide or if I wanted to show that again I would click on use. You do have to click on that button. You can't just go over and check the boxes on the left. <coughs> Somebody asked, would we be able to add that cell phone over on the left side screen under home phone? Uh, currently, no. Um, however, if you've been with us a while, you've seen that we are rewriting the membership database. The actual records, meaning the family and individual records, have not been rewritten yet. Same screens I've seen since I started in 2007, uh, but I know that is a frequent suggestion. So. Hopefully, they may be adding a cell phone field for the household. Um, I don't know, though, because oftentimes, you know, in a household, people have different cell phones. But I do know that is a suggestion, so that might be something they're changing. But currently, no, you cannot add a cell phone field, or you can't add any fields to the actual household record. You can rename some of those, but you can't add them to the left or household side. Someone said, I see you making these changes in one person's database. Do these changes apply to all those members or visitors or only the ones you add the fields to? Um, this applies to everyone. I'm not adding it to just this person. Um, if you watch, I'll hit next. And we can see email address right at the top for all of these people. And if you look right towards the middle of the screen where you see cell phone and email newsletter, this, those fields are available for everyone. So when you add a new field, that is a field that is available and shows in all of the member records or all of the visitor records if you're showing it also in visitors. 
Someone said, does reordering the fields affect report layouts? No. Reordering the fields in the individual records has no effect on report layouts. Report layouts are completely separate, and you in the layout determine where you want something in that actual report layout. Someone said, can you get rid of the geographic area or carrier route designations? We don't need them at all. Uh, no, you cannot hide those or unshow them. You can rename them and use them for something else, uh, but you cannot get rid of them, no. Um, someone asked, is there a limit on the number of fields you can add? Uh, not that I am aware of. <clears throat> um, I've been here since 2007, and at this point I have never heard of someone making so many fields that they couldn't add more. Um, if you add more fields than you see, you know, to the bottom of the screen, then what will happen is you'll get a scroll bar along the right, and you'll have to scroll down to see all of your fields. Okay, another question, special question. We have two congregations in our parish. Is it possible to have two members databases in this program? Uh, no. You can install the program twice if, um, if you'd like and use each install for the different congregations, uh, but there is no way to create two member databases within the one membership module. Um, you could use, you know, maybe members for the one congregation and visitors for the other, um, or you could install a second copy of Church Windows and use that for the, the second congregation. Uh, someone asked, can cell phone have an unlisted box like the home phone? Currently, no, <laughs> but I know, <coughs> excuse me, that is also a suggestion I put in a couple times um, into the suggestion database. So when they rewrite the program, or rewrite, I'm sorry, the membership record sections of the membership module, uh, that is something that they may do. Um, currently, what I've recommended for people is if you're including cell phones in the directory, but some people, they want theirs unlisted, create a regular cell phone field, and then create a second cell phone field and call it unlisted cell phone, and actually put that person's cell phone number in your unlisted cell phone field. Um, and if the field you're showing in your directory is cell phone, then it won't show anything because you have put their number in your, your second field called unlisted cell phone. All right. Wow, I thought I thought I would be so overwhelmed with questions that we'd be here till 5 o'clock because normally Ross is helping me answer things. Um, it is uh, 2.23, so we are past the end of our 20 minutes. I'm definitely um, sticking around to answer more questions, but if you need to leave, just click the little X on your GoToWebinar toolbar, and that will close you out of the classroom. Um, I am recording this, so once it's cleaned up and standardized, we will put it up on our new version resource page. All right, uh, see some more questions. Uh, somebody said, hypothetical, if you need the two congregation databases, couldn't you add a new field and call it Church 1 and a second one called Church 2 and specify it on your reports? Yes, you could. <laughs> um, or you could just create one list field and have a code and description for Church 1 and a code and description for Church 2 and then assign people to that. Um, even better if you're not using maybe the geographic area or the carrier route on the household side, you could use that to indicate church one and church two, and then it would apply to the entire household, so you wouldn't have to add it to each individual in the household. But yes, great idea, Susan. Uh, will the rewrite of the membership records include the city and state as separate fields? I don't know. I'm not a programmer. Um, I'm not privy to all the changes that are going to occur. I know that is a suggestion that I put into the uh, suggestions database. So we can keep our fingers crossed, but I, I don't know because I'm not a programmer, so I don't know what all their plans are for the records. Uh, but I imagine it's probably a, a big rewrite because they've done a lot to attendance and visits, and these screens we're looking at right now have yet to be rewritten. So I think that's going to be a, a big rewrite. Just my guess. I'm not a programmer. I just remember back in, in the 80s in high school doing Pascal and making like five pages of code just to have it do one little tiny thing. <sighs> 
All right. So I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that, but hopefully they will because we have, I, ha I know that's been suggested. Uh, someone asked, is there a way to have new donors be automatically entered into the member database? Um, let me show you um, really quickly here because that is a little more towards donations, a little off our topic, but um, if you have the most current version of the program, when you are in donations, if you're entering someone, if you click the little plus sign by giver, you do now have the option, prior to 18, you only could add people to donations, uh, but now you have the option to add a member or a visitor. And when you choose that, that's going to create a, a household and individual record over in the membership database. So you can add a donor to the donations module and choose to add an actual membership record. Right. And I believe that also from Manage Givers, if they're adding people there, if you click the plus at the end of Individual Givers, you have the option to add a member or a visitor. And again, that creates a record in the member or visitor file. Um, if you're not familiar with donations, anyone in your membership database automatically shows in donations as a possible donor. But you can also create by clicking add individual or group at the top, you can create a, a individual or group that is only in donations. But if you want them to be in membership, you want to make sure you either make it in membership or when you make it, you choose add member or add visitor. All right, are there more questions? Now, if you're in the middle of uh, typing a question, you might want to hit enter. And then just type the rest of your question. That way I don't close the class before or the, the webinar before you finish your question. And you're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. I see some thank yous and people saying it's very informative. Um, I don't know if Susan could see, but Gloria said thank you for your idea, Susan. I don't think she sees the question. So, Susan, Gloria, appreci Gloria appreciates your idea on how to do the database. Oh, thank you. Somebody said, I hope, hope you feel better. I'm not sure what's going on. I got real dizzy. I just moved and was working on the garage last night and got real dizzy and laid down. And I don't know if I got food poisoning or what, but I'm still feeling just a little off kilter today. So hopefully it's just the weather. Oh, thanks. Somebody said probably a brain tumor. <laughs> no. Life's going good. I just moved and things are going really well. I don't need... Nobody needs a brain tumor. <laughs> My luck, probably. All right. Any other questions? Somebody said dehydrated. Possible, because normally I drink lots of coffee, and I think I get some water from that, but I only had one cup of coffee yesterday. Somebody said allergens, and that's what my brother said, moving around all the boxes, it could have been allergens. So if it continues, I will go see the doctor, I promise. <laughs> Thank you for all your suggestions, though. I Googled my symptoms, and no, don't ever do that. <laughs> okay, and here's another question. That's just, is this the medical advice hotline, somebody asked? That's, yes, do not, do not Google, and don't give me any other, any other things to fear. Okay, somebody asked, we want to know who is an active giver in the member visitor database. Uh, is there a way to do this? Um, Pam, that all depends on what you consider active, if you mean status code. Um, that's something that really you should give us a call on because um, it's kind of specific to your data. If you don't mind calling in, a tech can help you with that. Um, I take a late lunch. Normally I take it at 2. As soon as I'm done here, I am going to take my lunch. So you can call and ask for me if you want me to help you with that and answer that, but I won't be back at my desk till 3.30. So you might be waiting a little longer than if you just call in and ask for anyone to help. Um, but typically you could, you know, I, that to me would be a status code of active. And you could do that through reports and list labels, or I'm sorry, reports directory export. My brain is going back to the old old program. All right. Any other questions? Susan, you're funny. She's told me zero. <laughs> I'm not going to say what she wrote. <laughs> oh, this has been a fun, fun webinar. Not that they aren't always fun, but got some very interesting 
suggestions and medical advice at the end. Any other questions pertaining to church windows and your membership database data design? <laughs> Thank you, Jeanette. She said our tech support is tops. We try. We have our off days. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in, so I am going to go ahead and end this webinar and go get some food. Um, oh, here came another question. What is the best way to name the mailing code for both spouses? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. The, the mailing code is on the family record, so you can only have one mailing code for the household. Um, if the people in the house want different kinds of mail, that's where you might want to create a field on the individual record for that. Um, but Brandy, if you can call us, um, if I'm not understanding your question, uh, if you call in, we might be able to help you better with that. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, then I'm going to go ahead and end today's user group. Um, real quick, I always like to show this. If you're new to Church Windows or if somebody else signed you up for this and you didn't know we have all these webinars, if you look under Church Windows Training, the last option, Free Online Webinars, if you scroll down, there's a list here of all the webinars, and we have new ones every month. Um, you can just click on Register Now to sign up for those. Uh, and sign up for as many or as few as you want. Again, we do record these, and once they're cleaned up and standardized, if you look on the left under support, in new version resources, we have all of these recorded and up here for you to view for free. So there are movies specific to each different module and versions. Uh, a lot of the, um, if you're in 18, a lot of these version 17 movies still apply. Um, then also one other thing under support is the support blog. And the support blog has movies and free documents that you can review or print out, and those are very helpful as well. All right, again, I, I like to show that at the end just for anybody who's new so you can find all of our free help that's out there if you don't want to wait for a phone call. I'm going to go ahead and I think I said it three times now. I'm really going to close the room now. Thanks so much for attending and sign up for more user groups if this was helpful to you. And have a great rest of the week. Bye.